Um, are we recording? Okay, so this is all right. Review for test number one, guys. There are gonna be two questions. Question number one is gonna be a transform or calculation. Question number two, it's gonna be service. Here's the stuff that I want you to know about question number one. Question number one, mm -hmm. I I do have a delta del, delta y. You guys remember delta y transformer. I want to go get rid of my email. All right, so delta y transformer. I do have a delta y transformer, and I need to find a few things for this delta y transformer. On the primary, guys, and you all know it's a phase A, phase B, phase C, phase A, phase B, phase C, and this neutral is right in the middle here. <clears throat> Typical transformer. The following is known about the transformer. The following is known. It's a 480 on the primary volt. On the secondary side, guys, it's a 208 slash 120 volt. 208 slash 120 volt, that's given. The impedance of the transformer is 4%. This is the Z. The impedance of the transformer is 4%. And the KVA of this transformer is 100,000KVA. Uh, this is my beautifully laid out transformer. My beautifully laid out transformer. That I need to size a few things for it. Any question is about the given transformer? Impedance is 4%. Uh, the size is 1,000. The voltage on the primary is 400. On the secondary, it's a Y, 208, 120. Three-phase transformer. I need to size the following. Find the following and size the following. Any question is about the given? Two things. This will be PDF sent to you, both in the network, and also will be recorded YouTube tonight. So if we miss something, hopefully, if you have nothing to do tonight, you can watch it. Okay. By the way, also, just FYI, guys, there is an example like this. And I'm just waiting for somebody to go watch what I did last time, a month ago, and say, Chad, you did it differently. I'm just really um, find, find that thing. So anyway, there's another presentation about Transformer right now, guys, in YouTube, too. The same example. Okay, the, the first thing we need to find, the first thing we need to find, guys, I need you to find the, um, the primary, <clears throat> primary line current. I need to find the primary line current. The primary line current. Where would the primary line current red go? I like you. Uh, <laughs> Where would the primary line current go? On the primary side, right? Everybody knows the primary current comes from the primary. So I'm going to find the primary. I primary. Anybody knows what the I primary equal? I'm going to find the I primary. The KV of the transformer. KVA divided by 1.73 times the voltage, the V. Equal. <clears throat> the primary in the transformer, guys, would be then um, 1000K. Divide this by 1.73 times 480. When you do the math on this, you're going to end up with a 1204 kelp amp. 1204 amp. 1204 amp. 1204 amp. Number two. Oops, let's use the color coding the same, hopefully. Number two, so this is the first thing I want you guys to find, the primary current, the primary current. Primary coil current. The primary coil current, as we guys know, it's right here. I primary coil. This is I primary line. The line is coming to the transformer. The coil is inside the transformer inside the transformer. It's a phase current, coil or phase current. Very easy, guys, for this. Worthless in terms of designing, worthless, doesn't have any value in designing. 
just threw it there just for the mental exercise. Um, so this is going to be primary line, I primary coil equal, you take the primary line, I primary line, and divide it by 1.73. That's, that's all that you have to do. Take the primary line divided by 1.73. For tomorrow, guys, you're, you can bring your formulas with you. I don't want to see the example, but you can bring your formulas. And if you do your math on this non-important value, mental exercise value, you're going to end up with uh, 1204, 1204 divided by 1.73, and you're going to end up with uh, 696 amps. I'm not going to even circle it because it's it's not important in sizing things. Just just to know that inside the transformer. In the guts of the transformer, that current will be going through the coils. The coil, the coil, the phase, the term that we use, coil or phase, not line. What you need to do, guys, when we become designers and engineers, we work line to line. We don't care about the coil, unless you're a manufacturer and you know. Okay. Any question about this? Any question, Mr. Bab? Am I two, three, or four steps ahead of you? <laughs> or on the same page? <laughs> the PDF? Yeah, PDF. Real PDF, you, Mr. Bab. Should have given you enough time to go, you know, do your biological needs, though. Yeah. All right. Let's go do the same thing on the secondary side, guys. On the secondary side, that's number three. I need secondary. Secondary line current, secondary line current, secondary line current, what format did we use in terms of color here, we used, okay, secondary line current, I, secondary line, equal KVA divided by 1.73 times the voltage, the, which voltage though, voltage on the secondary side, line voltage on the secondary side, so if you do that, I want somebody to do the math on that one. 1,000, I think I, the, my math is uh, 1,000 K divided by 1.73 times 208. What did you guys come up with? Can somebody check the math for me on that one? 208. Math. Anybody wants uh, 10 out of 10 guys in the uh, class of engagement? No? What's the answer? 277. Add another 7. I'll go with it. 277. 7. 7. Damn. Anybody came up with something different? 277. 2777. Right? Everybody got that one? 277. Okay. 2779. Oh. 277. 277 is good enough. All right, so that's three, four. Four. Um, secondary. Secondary coil current. The coil current, guys, in a, in a Y, I, secondary coil. Do you guys agree that I secondary coil, if it's a Y and I line and coil in a Y are the same. So I secondary coil equal I secondary line equal 2777M. The same current. The same current. No gimmicks, nothing. Number five, number five, my friends, we need to size the primary feeder. Now we're getting into the conductor, primary feeder. Primary feeder, and I'll wait here. We're going to size the primary feeder for this conductor. 
a major assumption I'm going to do, guys. This might not be right all the time. A major assumption, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this transformer is actually a continuous load. And I'm going to size the base of continuous load. Not, it's not always that. That's not always true. So <clears throat> just a flyer, if somebody told you, why did you multiply by 1.25? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, just size the base on this continuous load, which so is not. Yes, on the test. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use, guys, 1.25 times always the I primary line equal 1.25 times um, I primary line, my friends, is 1, 2, or 4. You're going to end up with a healthy. 1505, 1505 amp. Okay, remember we're in the primary side. And then <clears throat> I, Chad Kirby, single handedly decided to parallel. Okay, so we multiplied by 1.25. Mr. Buell, you don't have to do that all the time. This for this the worst scenario. This is kind of worst scenario. Let's do it 1.25. Now if you go uh, Spencer and ask um, um, the gray bar or any of these vendors for a 1505 amps, they think you don't belong in the industry. We're going to translate this into AWG or into KCL. So how do you translate this? I decided based on my calculation to parallel 4 run. This is a big conductor. You can't find a conductor. I'm going to parallel 4. You can parallel 5 if you want to. Not a big deal. In the test guys, parallel as many as Crash because I don't want to parallel. I told you when you parallel, hover around the hover around the conductor of 500. Try to shoot for a conductor no more than 500. That's kind of uh, best practice, I guess. So you have 1505. Five, divide this by four. If you divide this by four, and I really want to stick these here, 376. I came up with 376 amps, and you take this one to 310.16. Soon to be changed, soon to be changed. Um, and if you do that one, my friend, you're going to have three, three conductors, 500 kcm. Three conductors, 500 kcm. Three conductors, 500 kcm. How many sets? I'm going to add to it here, guys. How many sets? Four sets. So I have four sets, three conductor, 500 kcm. Ryan, my friend, why do you think it's three conductors? It's a delta? It's a delta. So there's no neutral. It could be four and three phase, but there's no neutral. Remember, we're talking about the primary. Look at the primary. Only three conductors come in. That's the beauty of the three phase system. The beauty of a delta. Four sets, 300 kcm. Good size to size. Good. I think. Not the one who's going to be terminated, these boys, right? If you ask the guys who terminate, they will tell you, don't go higher than 4 out, man. It's too heavy to work. It's a nightmare, though. Job security, because you want more, more of them, then keep bending conduits, especially if you listen to DJ. All right, question. Can I move on? Yes, no? Okay. The second one, I think I made a mistake in the math, so you guys are going to do it for me. Number six. Number six is, uh, we did the primary, so what do you think we're going to do the secondary, right? Secondary feeder <clears throat> or conductors. For the secondary feeder, we take, as you guys continue, we assume it's continuous load, 1.25, multiply it by the current that we came up with is 2777. Now, this is where I need you because my number was up here. What's the answer for that? 3471. 3471. Anybody dare to disagree with my friend? I do. Molly? Oh, what is what do you say? Okay. If it's 70, we're not going to fight over one amp. When you guys have 3400 amps, one, two, three, four, five amps is meaningless. You know, when you have 3400 amps. When you have five amps, an amp is one fifth of the boy. It's a big deal. Okay, three, four, seven, one amps. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> I decided I decided to go now. 
in in a real life application, guys, Brooks, you're gonna see where 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 would that be tied to? A panel, go size the panel, then size the conductor is based on the panel. We don't worry about this one because we don't know this could be feeding a load downstream, not a panel. It could be. So we're gonna size directly just based on the amps. So I'm gonna to decide to have three, four, seven, one. I single handed the chat carry they decided to throw ten of them. Ten. Okay, and if you guys throw 10, that's easy, easy math, right? 3, 4, 7.1 amp, and we're going to go to 310.16 under which column? 75 degree column. You're going to remember this, guys, from at least this and when. Um, 500, are we still in the 500? Yeah. Yep, still in the 500. So we're going to end up with how many sets? 10 sets of 4. four I'm going to, I decided to pull full neutral. You don't have to. There's calculation for neutral. You guys have done it with me. I'm going to pull for neutral. 400 conductors, 5-0 KCM. That's it. 10 sets of four conductors, uh, phase A, phase B, phase C, and a neutral. Okay. All right, so six. Number seven. Any question guys about this? Any question? Just a reminder, this is a review. Not new material, hopefully. But I know it wasn't last year. Yes, Mr. Brown? What, what about the price price to divide? If you decide to divide four, you might not find a conductor that can carry the. the oh, then you're going to go to bus docks, bus bar. So how do I know that I have to divide ten? Uh, because if you divide by ten, you get an accept, you get an amp that you can find a conductor for it. When you get this number, Mr. Bab, make sure this number is not larger than the largest amp for the largest conductor that you have in 316. <laughs> That's one way. Um, or. Huh? Yeah, well, that's a good idea. So keep it around 400 amps. That's a good, that'll give you close to five, uh, 500, 600 kcm. Okay. okay, so it's, thank you, Brad. This is a good idea. Why don't you, when you shoot for this one, keep it, keep this number around 400 amps. So that will get you a 600, 500 kcm conductor or less. If that, I don't want to. Make a confusion here while we have this. Okay. Any questions about this? Good one, though. All right. Um, the the second thing, guys, number seven is I need the over current protection device for this system, for the primary. Over current protection system for the primary. And if you guys remember, um, four fifty dot three B. You're going to go to four. 50.3b and we see 450. Is, the, is it over 600? Oh, never mind, never mind. Both of them are less than 600. If you guys go there, the multiplier it's going to be 2.5 times the primary current was uh, 1204. And if you do the math on this, you're going to end up with 3010. And um, my notes here says you can't go up. Because it doesn't tell you to go up, right? Correct me, guys, from from mistaken here. You have to go down to what? Three thousand amps. Three thousand amps. Okay. Why didn't I go up? Because if you guys go to four fifty dot three B, over protection device for a transformer, we have a primary and secondary protection. So you're going to go to the one that says primary and secondary. Two point five multiplier. Everybody can there. And you're going to find the 3,000 amp. Any question, my friends? Straightforward, no? Gimmicks, nothing? Yes, did you guys find something different? Red? No, I'm just... Okay. You can use DeWalt, or you can use the code. Or you can ask your grandma about the answer too. 
Can I move on? No? Yes? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a reminder, this will be PDF sent to you guys on the network and YouTube but online. Okay, thank you, Muhammad. Number eight. Number eight, my friends. Number eight, uh, I'm going to go to the secondary side. Secondary overcurrent protection device. Secondary overcurrent protection device. The same table, guys, for uh, 450, right? 450.3B. 450.3B. If you guys go to 450.3B on the secondary side, it will tell you go 1.25, multiply that baby by, what was it, 27? What was the? 2777. Seven, seven. I did not do the math on this. I need you guys to give me the answer for this, please. 3471. And it tells you there is a note number one, which tells you to go up. So that will leave you with what? 400. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> I don't know if I forgot to mention, you will take the 3471. You will take this one to 2. 40.6. Everybody knows where we find the standard size in 240.6, <clears throat> right? We, we cover that one, and that will get you a healthy 4000 F. You have landed yourself into a 4000 amp switchboard or switch gear. Big boy. Now, where did you see 470? Yeah, from the top. Now, if you guys are bringing uh, tying this transformer to a feeder. I would go bring a switch, a switch a gear switchboard 4000 amp and size the conductor at 4000 amp. Match. I always like to match the conductor to the panel. It's a very good design idea, guys. If it's landed on the transformer led in the panel, always size the conductor based on the overcurrent protection device of the panel. But for the test? <clears throat> for the test, do what? Yeah, size exactly what I did. Do the conductors first. Exactly what I did. The conductors first. Yep. You know what? If you did it, if you size if you size it based on the four thousand AM and you say, Chad, I'm sizing it based on landing on the panel, right. I'll give you full credit for it. I know you know. So it's really um so all right, so number eight. Number nine grounding. Electron conductor. Grounding electro conductor. Grounding electro conductor, guys. <clears throat> uh, 250.66. You're going to go to article 250.66, an EC code book. And it will tell you how many runs did we do. On the primary and the secondary side, how many runs? We had 10 yeah. times how many? 500? 500. We use 500. K. That will get you 5000 zero, 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 K uh, C M, right? So you multiply the number of runs by the conductor size on the secondary side because we, we put the grounding conductor on the secondary side. Okay? And then from here, guys, you're going to end up with. Five zero 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 KCM. Take it to table two fifty dot sixty six, and I'll give you the largest, which is uh, Holly number three up. The largest. I will give you one conductor three up. Let me repeat myself. Grounding electrode conductor is size based on the conductors coming out of the transformer on the secondary side, not the primary. That's why we multiply it by 500, 10 times 500. This is coming from the secondary side. Isn't that what we came up with in the secondary side? We came up with 10 sets of 500. <clears throat> End up with 5,000 K, KCL. Go to table uh, 250.66. You land yourself a one conductor 3R. The last one, number 10 is the last one. Last one, my friend. Last one. So we size the grounding electrode conductor. 
I can't emphasize this is grounding electrode conductor, not the equipment grounding conductor. That's the one that you tie the system to Mother Earth. Or when we go invade the moon, you're going to tie it to the moon. And we put electrical system there, right? Okay. Can I move? Can I move? Yep. Okay. Number 10 and the last one, guys. <clears throat> Anybody can guess? System bond, or actually main bonding jumper. They call it main bonding jumper. Main bonding jumper. Everybody knows what the main bonding jumper is? You tie the neutral to the ground. The neutral to the ground. Grounding electrode conductor, you take the ground, the neutral, take it to Mother Earth. This is tying the neutral and the ground together with one wire. For this, guys, we do the same calculation. We take 10, we multiply it by 500kcm, give you 10, uh, it give you 5,000, right? 5,000kcm. <clears throat> um, the code for this one, guys, is uh, 250.28d, the code. The code for this is 250.28D1, D1, what's 250.10C, 250.10C, what's the equipment bonding jumper, what's the equipment bonding jumper, what's the main bonding jumper, yeah, there's equipment bonding jumper, there's equipment bonding jumper on the line side, the load side. So is it D1? So the one that says system. Bonding jumper at secondary 250.102. Main bonding. The main bonding jumper is 2. Let me get the. Main bonding jumper is 258.28, right? 28D. D, is it D1? Okay, D1. The other one is for the equipment bonding jumper. Okay, so based on this, guys, if you go read. <coughs> It tell you take the five kcm, take it to table two fifty dot sixty six. If it's more than eleven hundred kcm, is it more than eleven hundred kcm? The answer here is yes. Then what you need to do is you take a twelve point five percent of the five zero 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 kcm. Let me repeat myself. You take this number, 5,000 K, to table 250, 250, 250, table 250, that's 66. Is it more than 900 KCM cover? Yes. If yes, then you multiply it by 2.5. If no, you just use the number from that table. 12.5%. 12.5%. Uh, 12 12 okay, so I need somebody to give me the 12.5%, guys. So this is 0 0.125 times 5000. Okay, anybody did the math on that one? How much? 625 kcm. Then you take the 625 kcm, take this one to chapter 9, table 8. And what do you think the next standard? Do we have 650? We don't have 650. KCM. We have 500, 600, and the next standard is 700, right? Am I right? You can look at. 700, yeah. So this will be a 700 KCM. 700 KCM. Done. <clears throat> Repeat. Multiply the number of runs by the size on the uh, secondary side, get you 500 KCM. Take the 500 KCM to table 250.66. Ask yourself, is it more than 1100 KCM? If the answer is yes, then you apply this rule, 12.5% of this number. Is it 12.5% of the 5000K? Get your 625 KCM. That's not a standard unless you want to buy yourself a, 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 a pay an arm and leg for it. You can custom design a 625 KCM. Then because it's not standard, you can't go down. So you have to go where? up. So that's what forces you to go up to the next standard. Where where are the next standards? They're located in uh, chapter 9, table 8, 
and that will get you a 700 KCL. <clears throat> no problem. Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, I have one more question. The building, and then we'll, uh, and I, I still, you know, will take me probably less than half an hour to go to, over the second set of, it, we're going to size the building, a commercial building now. Straightforward, sizing commercial building. Any question you guys want a uh, second to go to the bathroom? Stretch? No? Because it's lunchtime and I can't, I can't uh, step on your lunchtime, guys. Otherwise, you'll start yelling and yakking at me. Okay, I'm sorry. Muhammad is, and um, Brian, everything is okay here? Yeah. Good? All right. Let me just write the, the next problem. So, question number two. We have a commercial building. <clears throat> Commercial building office time. Office time. We have a commercial building office type and with the following. Commercial building office type with the following. There's a following load in this board. <clears throat> I'm going to put the loads. Um, I have the following on it, guys, in the system. AC system, AC, AC air conditioning. Uh, I have 15 at 15 horsepower, three phase. And what, what was the voltage of that building that I want to size for? Um, 480. The whole system does. The service for this system, please write yourself a note. The service that I want to bring is actually 480 slash 277 volt. And as we all know, this is a three phase system. I have a building. I want to power that boy with the 480 277. I have 15 air conditioning. Each one of them is 15 horsepower at three phase. At three phase. The second thing that I, I always have in this building, and you're going to find it's really easy. The second thing I want to put the heat. Heating, I have my heating load, and my heating load, guys, is a lump sum of 150 kVA. I added all the kVA for the heating system and lump sum bit. 150. 150. Did it say 30? 150. Okay. The second thing that I have, guys, is the square foot square foot of the building we need the square foot is 50k square foot or the area let's put the area of the building area the area of this building is actually 50,000 square foot 50,000 square foot <clears throat> that's a different Okay, I have one sign, one sign, I have uh, 200, um, so 200 feet of track light, 200 feet of track light, I have 50 feet of multi outlet assembly. I decided to put in this building multi out assembly. And I have um, 250 receptacles. I have 250 receptacles. Maybe I should number them here. I'm just going to number them here. So make it easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. And the last thing I'm going to put it right in here, guys. Eight, 
So we have eight things. I have 10 circuits, one computer load. Computer load circuits, and these are 20 amp at, um, at 120. And how many of them do I have? I have 10 circuits. Okay, here's the building that I have. Here's my building. 250 receptacles. Receptacles. I have eight things, guys, in this building, and I need to size this building. Size this surface. Number four is one. Thank you. One sign. A sign. Sign for the building. One sign for the building. Okay, any question guys about this? That's all what's given in this building. We need to size the service. We need to size the service. We need to do the following guys. Find the conductor size, the over temperature device, and the panel. Three things, only three things. A panel size, over temperature device, and a conductor size. Three things for this building. It's, uh, everything is 480. The, the AC is 480. Everything is 480. Well, we're going to size for 480. The receptacles will be 120, but the system is 480. All your motors and everything else is 480. Yeah, we're going to wire size, panel, and panel over temperature device. Can I move next slide, guys? Okay. All right. So let's start, guys, by sizing. Um, I'm going to call this is A here. Lighting. Lighting, or we call it general lighting, the general lighting. Light. General lighting. General lighting. General lighting, guys, you're going to go to table 220.12. Table 220.12. If you go there, it will tell you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. First, it's continuous load. You're going to take it 1.25 because continuous load. Second, we have 3.5 from that table. Third, the square foot of the building is 50. So that's basically is going to give you 219, 219 kVA. Okay, why 50? 50k because of the area is 50k. Why 3.5 from the table? Why 1.25? Continuous load. Again, why 1.25? Continuous load. Why 3.5 from the table? Why 50k? The square foot of the building. <clears throat> Any question guys about this? Straightforward. Brandon, you come up with something different on that one? No? Okay. The second thing I want to do, guys, be the track line. Track light. The track light. Uh, the track light is 220.443B. I have. You might have to check that. 220.43B. Could you please somebody check that one for me? Right. Okay. Thank you. From 220.243B, uh, guys. Um, code. You're gonna find the. Uh, I will tell you, for track lights, I have 200 feet of them. For every two feet, that's why I divided by two. For every two feet, how much we can give? I have 200 feet. Divide by two, multiply this by 150. And don't forget that this is a continuous load. So what do you need to do here? 1.25. I'm going to repeat myself. I, I believe I came up with 19. 19 kVA, 19 kVA. I need somebody to verify this one for me, please. Thank you. And I'm going to put the star next to each of these two. One more time, Muhammad, my friend. The 1.25 because it's continuous load. The 200 feet, divide by two because for every two feet, they're going to give 150, case, uh, 150 volt amp. The 150 volt amp is coming from four th uh, um, from 220.43. Okay, so that's for the track light. 
my track life. Any question you guys about the track lights? Mr. Rebet, 125 is continuous load. 200 is how many feet of this track light I have. Divide by two because they give 150 for every two feet, not one foot. So the 150 is coming from 220.43b. And that's what your demand is for this step. C, sign. For sign, guys, I have 220.14f. It's called 220. Not 14 F. If anybody can verify that one is okay. is right, thank you. 220. So it says, guys, you're gonna take 1.25 times 12. 1.25 because continuous load. 1200 volt amp for every sign for a commercial building. That will get you 1.5 kV and A, and you put a star next to it. That's what you're gonna be carrying. Any question, guys, about this? Any question about this? Any question? The sign straightforward. I want to go to the to the heating cooling system now. The heating cooling. Any question? Can I move? Can I move? Almost there. Hang in there, guys. Can I move? Yeah. Thank you. A, B, C, D. D, I'm going to do for D, guys, heating. For the heating, what was the load for the heating? Was given uh, 150. Do I need to calculate? No. A, B, C, uh, A, B, C, D, E, Chad, I'm going backwards. E, E, I'm going to go with the AC, air conditioning, air conditioning. For air conditioning, guys, here's what we do in the calculation. We're going to take the 100, uh, the 15 horsepower, take it to table two, uh, not two, four, uh, 430 dot 250. It will give you 21 amps. Okay? That's step number one. Find the amp for the horsepower motor. At which, which at 480. Don't forget it's 480 volt. If you go to 50 horsepower, you table 430.250 under 480, three phase. Don't forget it's a three phase. Not like you're going to find a single phase 480. You're going to get 21 amps. Okay. Then, here's what we're going to be doing, guys. I have 15 of them. Multiply by the following. I'm going to do it all in one step. 1.73 times uh, 21 times 480 equal. I put them all in one step and I came up with 261. 261 kVA. And then choose largest. Cool or heat. Choose the largest of the cool and heat, right? Choose largest cool and heat and then buy it. Then what happened to this here? We dropped the 150 and we picked the 261. Because we choose the largest. Let me repeat myself because somebody's gonna ask where did you kill? 1.73 because I'm converting the amps into KVA. Three pay. 21 coming from the 15 horsepower. 480 is the system. Why did I multiply by 15? I have 15 of them. So tomorrow if I give you 30 guys, don't multiply by 15 please. Multiply by 30. Any question guys? So I dropped the heating bin my friend because heating is smaller than cooling. Non-coincidental load. I don't have the article for that. Was it 220.60? I want to say, Holly. The non coincidental load, 220.60. So that's coming from 220, I think, 60. 
it tells you that you yeah, it tells you that you can drop that load. 220 not 60. Thank you. Any question, guys? A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm not gonna go back to D now. Okay, we're at F. We still have 15 minutes for lunch. Questions. Okay, let's go F. My F is gonna be computer load. Now this is a special type of load, guys. That's dedicated circuits, dedicated circuits for racks of computers, not laptop racks of computers, dedicated circuits. And if you guys remember, if you look at my requirements, I have ten of them. Each one of them is twenty amps, and each one of them is powered by one twenty because I'm telling you so. And you, you, if you do your math, you're going to end up with a twenty-four kVh. That might confuse you. These are dedicated brand circuits, 20 amp, going to racks of computers, plugged in to crunch numbers in a data center that belongs to X um, vendor or X uh, company. Okay? So straightforward at the level. That might be exaggerated a little bit, but we know it's going to be feeding dedicated for this equipment. That's the worst scenario, basically. Any question, guys? Dedicated circuit. The only thing is left is a receptacle, if I remember right. We got everything. The only thing that's left is a receptacle, right? 50 multi yep. multi and multi out assembly. Receptacle multi out assembly. Okay. So a F G. Thank you. Remind me you said good. F G. Um, I'm gonna do receptacles on multi outlet assembly in one step, guys. Receptacles want to help us in one step because that's how we do it. Receptacles. Receptacles. Receptacles that I have, how many of them do I have, guys? Um, I have 250. Multiply them by 180. If I multiply my receptacle, 250 by 180, I get 45 kVA. Then, multi out let assembly my multi outlet assembly how many do i uh, how many do i have 50 multi 50 feet of multi assembly uh, spencer did they say it's continuous load have i mentioned anything being continuous load then for every five 180 if it was continuous load for every five um 180 for every one foot 180 so you divide by five and multiply it by 180 let me repeat myself one more time for every five feet of multi out assembly, the code says you can throw 180 volt amp for it if it's non continuous. Unless I tell you it's non continuous, a continuous, assume it's non continuous. So that will get you a healthy 1.8 kVNA. KVNA. Then I'm going to add him up. I want to add these two together, guys. The total, my total here would be what? Uh, my total here would be 46.8 kVA. I added the two together. The total of these two together. Okay? Add them up. Let me put a couple of, art, uh, of, of articles here. Um, I have for receptacle 220.14i, 220.14i, and I have for multi outlet assembly 220.14h. Please feel free to correct me if I try. Uh, these are where you got this info from if you don't believe me. Um, okay. Then the code says we add them up, guys, and we apply a demand factor. Now we need, we need to demand them. We're going to apply a demand factor on the total. Okay, so so you take the four, six, I'm going to say demand. Demand, very important. Demand for both, 46.8K, you take it to table 220.44. Table 220.44. If you guys go there, it tells you, read what it tells you. It tells you the first 10. K, V, A, don't you ever mess with them. Leave them alone. 
anything higher than thin KVA cut it by 0.5. So we're going to have um, a 46.8 minus 10, and we're going to cut this by 0.5, and we're going to add. Let me repeat myself, because that's where we're going to get confused. Think K, leave him alone. Take the calculation, subtract 10 out of it, cut it by half. And if you guys did that, and if I did my math is right, it's 29 KVA. Any question guys, 29 KVA? Can you guys write yourself a note here? Say, this is G1. This is G1 calculation for receptacles, multi out assembly. G1. Because there's another G we're gonna, we're gonna go there. There's two calculations for receptacles. If you guys remember, one based on the actual and one based on the code. And you choose the largest, yep. Choose the largest. Any question about the 29? Any question? Mr. Rebeck, the first 10,000, leave him alone. Subtract 10 from what you found here. Cut it by 0.5. Add it. Uh, DJ, my friend, I think I remember clearly. I don't think it's you or somebody else. Forgot to add the thing K. Add. Add the thing K. Okay, so that's calculation number one, guys. We're going to do one more calculation for receptacles, and then we we'll choose the largest. Okay, so G2, G-2. No, I can't, Mr. Rebeb. Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Okay, good. Thank you. So the second calculation, guys, is based on the NEC code book, uh, which is 220 dot, the same thing, receptacle. Based on uh, this is the two twenty dot fourteen k. Based on two twenty dot fourteen k. If you guys go there, it tell you you have to do it this way too. You take one volt amp, multiply it by fifty, multiply it by um, basically fifty k, the square foot of the building, fifty k, and that will get you a fifty k v a. And what was the first one? Okay, now then you ask yourself, choose largest of G1 or G2. You, you need to choose the largest of G1 or G2. What was the, what's the largest? Is 50 K V A. And that's the one that you're gonna carry downstream. Choose the largest of the calculation G-1 and G-2. Are you guys following me when I say G-1 and G-2? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I know you're gonna go eat, so I'm gonna, I'm done. I'm gonna add them up and size the panel now. We're done with all the calculation, guys. We're just gonna add them up now. Any question about, you choose the tool, I'm going to go add them all up, guys, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to go and correct me here. So the first thing in then, um, how am I going to call this? I'm going to call this is number one, sizing, sizing, um, or they call it demand KVA, building demand KVA, building, building demand load. Building demand load is basically add them all up. I hope I didn't forget anything. 2119, 24, 50. Um, okay, two, I already jumped one. 219, 19 plus 1.5 plus 
261 plus uh, 24, and please make sure that I did not forget any, plus 50, equal 575KBA. I added the demand for every step. Did you come up with the same? You guys come up with the same number? Mm -hmm. Jim, thank you. So that's that's the first thing. The demand for the building is five, uh, 575. Everything in KVA, by the way. Okay. The second thing that you need to find, number two, after you find the demand, is um, demand current. Building, building current. Well, this is kind of a step I added. Demand building current, or or building demand current it should be. Building, building demand current, which is basically find the I. I equal guys. Uh, five seven five k divide. What's the voltage system? One point seven three times four eighty. I want to find the amp for this boy, and believe it or not, six nine six nine two amps. Here's my six nine two amps. That's a demand current for this building. That's how much current is going to this building expected to consume out of the system. Okay, we're almost done. I know you guys are hungry. I promise you, no more than two, two seconds here. Number three, I go then and size over competition device. Though. Take this amp size over competition device. So over current protection device, piece of cake, you take the six, nine, two, take it all the way to 240.6, 700 rep, 700, 700 amp. So my over current protection device is 700. My over current protection device is 700. My over current protection device is 700. Any questions about this? Two more things left and they were done. The over current protection device is 700. Where did they get the 700? 240.6. Any question? Move on. Okay. Yes, no, Ben, my friend? Okay, number four. Number four is panel size. Panel size. The same thing, guys, I came up with uh, with 692. We're going to go to DeWalt. I need somebody to tell me where DeWalt uh, we find the panel size. What is it? 3-12? Uh, 3-12. So you're going to go 3 dash 12. And what's the panel size 3 pairs? Do we have 700 or 800? Panel size. Okay. 600, you're going to go to the switchboard then. Would that make it 13, Brad? 312.13, yeah. 13, huh? 312, 3 dash 13. Um, and that will be 800 amp, 800 amp panel from Dewalt, 800 amp panel. Okay. Number five, feeder size. Feeder size. I always say, guys, match match over current protection device, not panel. Over competition device. So, what's the over competition device size? 700 amp. I want to parallel. This is a big conductor to carry. I want to parallel. So, 700 amp. I'm going to cut it, Mr. Erbab, by two. So, that will give me, divided by two, will give me 350 amp. And if I take this one to 310.16 on the 75 degree column table, and you see, that will give me how many sets? That will give me two sets, two sets of, uh, let's hold neutral, four conductors, 500, 500 KCL. 
500 K, C, and M. So two sets of four conductors, 500 K, C, M each. 500 K, C, M each. Last thing, the but the, I have the main bonding jumper, just the main bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper, I mean, which is easy, guys. Any question how we size this, guys? Peter Overcome, always match. I can't emphasize this, DJ, my friend. Match the over the Peter to the Overcome picture device with the pen. You really, by code, you don't have to. Brooks, you could we could size directly based on the 692 and end up with a smaller cable. It's not a good idea, though. Future expansion, always match the panel, Overcome picture device. We're engineers, we don't pay for things, right? Okay, last thing is uh, main bonding jumper. Main bonding jumper. And we, we just went through the main <clears throat> main bonding jumper, guys. <clears throat> 250.28 D1. Um, 250.28 D1. And table 2, 50.66. We said if we parallel, <clears throat> if we parallel, we take the two, multiply by the two sets by the 500 K, give me 100, zero, zero. <clears throat> excuse me, 100 zero, zero K. <clears throat> We're going to take it to table 250.66. Is this more than 1100 KCM? No. So what's the answer to this? One conductor. Is it one up or two up? Two up. Had this been more than 1100 KCM, what do you do? 12 and a half percent. Times by 12 and a half percent. Gentlemen, we are done with this part. You guys, I need, um, when you come from lunch, guys, I'll take only probably seven minutes to go over the theory. Just what to concentrate on. Why don't you go lunch? When we come back, we'll go with the theory. Thank you. That, what you see is what's going to see. Thank you.